Can we please stand? In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me put to shame, nor let my hands cry out of the Lord. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are my God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Yeah. Hey.
the back of our program are some, oh, we have to do the prayer of confession first, sorry. This is my first rodeo, could you tell? Um, prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for loyal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Okay, now, in the back of our program, we have some people who have asked for prayers. There, it's also on this insert, which I always try to take that last little piece off and put it in my Bible, so I have that list all week long. It's important that we pray for our friends. Let's pray. O oh, Father, save us from being self-centered in our prayers and teach us to remember to pray for others. Help us set aside our desires and ambitions and instead seek to follow your will. Show us how to have humility in our lives and not to think about our needs and what we deserve to put, but to put others first and our needs last. Help us to remember the many gifts in our lives, our family and our friends, for work that gives, our, gives us a sense of purpose, for books and music, for the ability to give and receive love. And Father, we thank you for the sufferings and trials of our lives, in which together with our mistakes are among our most important lessons. We thank you for our deceased relatives and friends who have contributed in unimaginable ways to bring us to this day and to become the persons that we are. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So the children may depart. I can see them moving already. They were waiting for this. Jeannie will be waiting for them in the back of the church. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountains. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven the word of God for the people of God. Take me. 
me And though the storms may come I am holding on To the rock I cling How can I keep from singing your praise How can I ever say how amazing is your love? How can I keep up shouting your name? I know I am loved by the King, and it makes my heart want to sing. Thank you, Allison, for filling in for, for me today. Uh, it was a strange week. I, uh, uh, so much going on in, in uh, the life of our church and in Pastor David's life. Uh, I, I texted him last night and I said, uh, David, I haven't gotten the scripture for tomorrow. What, what translation would you like me to, to, to read? He calls me back and he says, you're out of town. I said, no, no. <laughs> I'm right here. Uh, uh, he said, well, I already got Allison to, to fill in for you. He said, okay, well, that's fine. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do something else. It'll be great. Uh, and then this morning he calls me, and uh, he's, he's, uh, he's been going uh, nonstop uh, since his father died uh, a week and a half ago and, and uh, uh, caught up to him, I think, last night. So he, he said, would, would I read the sermon for him? And I said, absolutely happy to do that. And so... Um, I do so. These, these are Pastor David's words. Uh, they're his jokes. If they're funny, give him all the credit. If they're not, uh, I obviously delivered them wrong. Um, but uh, it, before I do that, I want to do, uh, uh, 
give a little shout out. Uh, Bert Sheard, I think, is watching at home. Bert is 87 today. Uh, and so we, uh, we join and celebrate with him. Um, you know, it's these milestones that uh, uh, are, are most fun to celebrate uh, as a family. So uh, if, it's, if I say I, it's David. There's a, there's a story that comes out of New York. Uh, apparently, New York is, is, a, is, is practically a jungle. There are 11 million cats in New York City. There are 8 million dogs in New York City. Uh, the, 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 the place, the physical place itself, is a jungle of concrete and steel. And I tell you what, there's no room to bury a pet. And so one enterprising lady decided that she could provide a helpful service. So she, this apparently was a long time ago, she put an ad in the newspaper. Uh, People used to do that. If you're under a certain age, their papers came out every day, and you could put a couple lines uh, in the in the newspaper. She put an ad in the newspaper, the the offering her services. She said, "If your pet dies, I will take care of of the body for twenty five dollars. Give me a call." Uh, And this was she had a great business. It was great business. What she would do is she would go to the uh, to the uh, uh, Salvation Army uh, thrift store, and she would buy a suitcase for two dollars. Uh, she would go and she would collect the, the beloved uh, family animal, and then she would get on the subway. Now, if you haven't been to New York City in a while, uh, you might need to know that in, in New York, you need to watch your pockets. You need to keep track of those things that are with you because it's notorious, especially in certain neighborhoods, for, for the thieves. Well, she would get on the subway counting on this, and she would put the, the suitcase beside her and then immediately turn her attention to anything else. And she would wait until some enterprising young thief would come and take her suitcase and run off with it, absconding with not only the suitcase, but the dead animal. To which she would yell, stop, thief! Well, my guess is that the people who stole the suitcases were a tad bit surprised when they got home. I think a lot of us are not unlike those subway thieves. We chase after happiness. We, we grab what we think is going to make us happy, and yet when we get the very thing we've been, we've been pursuing, it fails to deliver. Matthew 3, verses 3 through 12, focuses on what uh, are commonly called the Beatitudes. This is part of Jer- uh, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And each of these Beatitudes begins with the word blessed. In Greek, To be blessed means to be happy, to be blissful. The American definition of happiness, though, has become watered down. Our understanding of happiness has evolved today to mean feeling good or enjoying certain pleasures or being the recipient of fortunate circumstances like winning the lottery. Do we have any lottery winners? $1.5 billion last night. I I just want to offer you pastoral counsel if, if any of you... The problem with these pathways to happiness is that they are temporary. Happiness can go as quickly as it comes. For Jesus, however, happiness is something that is persistent. Happiness is a gift from God that, once acquired, can never be taken away. Jesus begins the Beatitudes in verse 3 by saying, Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the poor. You know, those of us who grew up poor tend to romanticize the experience. We fondly recall the days gone by. But the funny thing is, I've never heard anyone say that they've enjoyed poverty so much that they're going to give up all they have to return to the time when they didn't. The the truth is that poverty isn't pretty. Poverty is something we choose to escape rather than something we choose to embrace. So how in the world would Jesus say, how happy are the poor? Happiness and poverty seem so distantly removed from one another. How can anyone be both happy and poor at the same time? This is, this is especially true when you look at the Greek word for poor. For the Greeks, to be poor literally means to crouch or to cower. In other words, we're talking about the kind of poverty that has beaten one down. Talking about a person who is absolutely destitute. How can such a person be happy? Well, recall that we're not just talking about 
any kind of poverty. Jesus is especially describing those who are poor in spirit. In this case, poverty is more of a spiritual condition of humility. Now, it may be a kind of humility that has been forced upon you by circumstance. Perhaps you grew up or are currently living under very humbling circumstances, not because you want to, but because you have no choice. Then there are also those who live in humility not because they have to, but because they choose to. Regardless of the path to humility you follow, the result is the same. You, ha you have no control. Whether you choose to give up control or that choice is made for you, the absence of control is what poverty of spirit, what humility is all about. Decisions are made for you. You have a limited say in how to live your life. You are at the beck and call of other people or of life circumstances. Now, given these limits, limitations, it seems ironic that Jesus would claim humility as the pathway to true, lasting happiness. In 2003, Pastor David uh, traveled to Port-au-Prince, Haiti, with a team on a mission. He encountered a professor from a local university who said this to him, Pastor, in my estimation, you Americans are the ones in poverty. You have access to many of all the material blessings in life, yet are still unhappy. Your young people are dry, dying from drug overdoses. Many cannot function without anxiety, anti-anxiety or antidepressant medications. However, in Haiti, you will find little material wealth, yet many are happy. Our people continue to smile and our children play, regardless of the difficult conditions in which we live. Pastor David writes that he quickly recognized how spot on the professor's observation was. It finally dawned on him that the greatest obstacle to our nation's happiness is not so much a function of greed as it is our pride. Pride is collectively impoverishing America. In a story in Luke chapter 18 verses 9 through 14, Jesus tells a parable which involves a Pharisee and a tax collector. Now both men, as was the, uh, the, the rule, went to the temple to pray. The Pharisee stood by himself and thanked God that he, quote, was not like those other people, those thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector standing beside him. In contrast, the tax collector couldn't even look up to face God. Rather, he beats his chest and says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus concludes his parable by observing that the, that the tax collector, rather than the Pharisee, was the only one who went home justified that day. The whole parable is introduced in Luke 18 verse 9 by directing it to those who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Jesus is making clear that those who trust in their own righteousness have a great difficulty cultivating a humble spirit. In fact, they feel that they're so rich in righteousness that they actually have contempt for those who don't quite live up to their standards. Now, in a sense, the Pharisees' approach would appear to be the best course of action. I mean, surely God would require that we possess extraordinary riches in order to enter his kingdom. We're talking, of course, about riches of the Spirit. However, before you reach such a conclusion, it's important to recall the very first thing that Jesus said when he began his ministry on earth. Jesus announced the kingdom with a call to repentance. Now, strictly speaking, repentance is a declaration of poverty. When you and I repent, we tell God that, we have, that what we have been doing is wrong, that our character is impoverished. Now, I realize this isn't an elegant approach to take. When we try and gain entrance into most things, we bring out with us our best qualifications. 
our highest ACT scores, our most polished resumes, our most attractive vitas. So especially as we seek entrance into God's presence, it seems reasonable that, we'd, that we would be asked to show many, how many good deeds we've done, how faithful we were to worship, how much we have given to the church, but instead... Jesus claims that the key to entering his Father's kingdom is simply our confession of spiritual poverty. There's an old hymn in the church that sings, Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, Helpless took to thee for grace. One of, the, one of the reasons why Pastor David's such a proponent of Alcoholic Anonymous is because of AA's declaration of humility and dependence upon God for sobriety and healing. Step three of the 12-step program states, we made a conscious decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. Now he's convinced that this is a profession each of us must make, regardless of what struggles we face. We admit that there is no way that we can make it on our own. Furthermore, the blueprint for happiness calls every Christian to rely upon Jesus one day at a time, one decision at a time, one act of faith at a time. Pastor David writes that several years ago, his father, Gene, traveled to the Holy Land. And upon visiting the church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, Pastor Gene says that he had an experience. You see, the place where Jesus is believed by many to have been born is located in a small grotto. In order to look into the grotto, one must kneel. Pastor Gene said that as he knelt before the grotto, he sensed a warmth that blanketed his heart. Then the thought occurred to him that the only way any of us can truly see, truly feel, truly experience the joy and happiness that only Jesus can give is to be bowed humbly before him. Let us pray. Lord God, we have searched in many places to discover the secret to authentic happiness. Yet each time we have come away feeling disappointed. Even now, we pursue a life of pleasure that, gives, that leaves us wanting. Please redirect our focus. Grant us the grace to set our sights on the one person who can fill our life with joy. Incline our heart that we may bow to your will in all things, knowing that you know what is best for us. Through the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Let's stand and recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which you gave your, himself up for us, he broke bread and gave thanks to you. To breaking the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered in your name and on our gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God now and forever. Amen. Will the communion servers please come forward? And as we do, I'll remind you that uh, uh, the ushers are going to direct you shortly to come forward where you'll be offered a piece of bread and some juice. Uh, there's a tray with cups if you uh, need a gluten-free option. Uh, as you return to this seats via the side aisles, the uh, ushers will be present to uh, receive those cups. Uh, let us celebrate the great Thanksgiving.
his table There is healing at the table of the Lord There is healing at the table of the Lord Oh, and I won't suffer anymore At his table Come all the Joke is easy, his burden light. He is able, he will restore at the table of the Lord. I know he has a place for me. pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At St. Paul Community United Methodist Church, our purpose is to love and live like Jesus. In doing this, we like to invite you to become part of what is happening here. Please fill out the Connect card that's in your program so that we know that you're with us today. If you have a prayer request or that you want, you want to become involved in our church in any way, please let us know. If you're watching online, you could fill out the form that is on the screen, or you could send us a message through Facebook. Our programs and outreach are funded by you. You may leave your gift along with your Connect card in the basket as you exit, or if you're watching online, there are instructions <clears throat> on the screen. You may also use the Church Center app 
instructions on how to access this is very easy. It's in our, uh, on our website. And today is the last day in which we are receiving Easter offerings. A service of healing and prayer will follow today in the chapel at 1115. Everyone is welcome to join us. Please do. Next Sunday, we have a family worship service again. It'll be at it, um, right after the service in the sanctuary, and anyone is invited. And um, it's a good time to bring our families together. There'll be crafts and pizza and um, a small, slight, so small service for the children so they can get used to uh, joining us. And finally, uh, St. Paul is hosting a community mother-son dance on Friday, April 19th from 7 to 9. It'll be in this fellowship hall. If you want any information about that, the event, um, there's a board in the back in the narthex if you want to find any more information, if you want to help, if you want to come. Um, now let's stand as we conclude our time together and sing the closing hymn number 364, Because He Lives.
out into the world in peace. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Honor everyone. And love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.